All right, welcome to the Corner Office Podcast. I'm here with a very, very special guest, JC, my guy here. Welcome. What's going on, Charles? You good? I'm good, man. I just want to introduce you one of Ottawa's most well-known artists and Millie on YouTube. So that's kind of lit, right? Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Thank you so much for having me. I really yeah. appreciate you. I want to I want to start off by asking you, like, I read that you were actually born in uh, the UK, yeah, not, so not here. Yeah, so, so we were born in, uh, I was born in London. Okay. And I moved to Canada when I was about roughly around two years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you, like, you don't got a British accent? I've been here for too long, and I tried to fit in too much when I was younger, so I guess you I lost it. You actually don't know it. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I, us, I used to have it. I think I lost it up around, like, grade one or two. Okay, so your parents, like... They still have it, yeah. They still have a British accent? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. All my All my cousins on the British side... Yeah, they all have an accent. My mom, more strongly on my mom, but like, yeah, you could hear you could hear it on my dad too. Oh wow! To me, it just sounds regular. Have you been back? Uh, not. I want to go back. Okay, I haven't been back. Like UK is sick. I've always wanted to go there. I've never, never been. Yeah, it's definitely the, one of the places to be on the bucket yeah. list for sure. For I was sure. born in Hong Kong, so it's a it's a British colony. So it was colonized by the uh, the British until 96, 97. So, well, yeah. I'd love to go to Hong Kong. Yeah, Hong Kong is <laughs> sick, man. Maybe perform there one day. <laughs> that would be the goal, fingers crossed. <laughs> so how did you get into music, man? Like, uh, tell, tell me the whole, like, take us back to when you were a kid and you were, like, I don't know, getting into it, man. Yeah, it's a very, uh, <clears throat> very interesting story. So um, it wasn't intentional, you know. So obviously back in high school, um, you know how it is, like, uh, hip-hop back in the day. Like, that was the coolest thing. Like, Drake, Kanye, Lil Wayne, yeah, um, 50 Cent. I don't want to miss any names, but you know all yeah. the OGs. And uh, uh, it was uh, around the time, I guess, when um, Drake really started... So Far Gone? Well, is that? for example, Drake kind of changed the game. Like, he proved that you could just be yourself and you could make music. Yeah. Before it was like you had to be like a gangster or you had to sing and dance like Usher. Like not everyone could do that, right? Yeah. So um, it started to, the game started to change. And uh, one of my friends at the time, um, I think we were, we were grade seven, eight, but this didn't happen until we were grade nine. So I recorded my first song when I was 14 in grade nine. So one of my boys at the time, he was making music. And, um, uh, we, we were friends. We always spent time together. And I was like, you know what? Like, I think I could do that better. Like, I want, like, I think I could do that. Like, I want to, I want to try it out. So we recorded like really, really old school rock band, mic, nice sock in a closet, like old program that doesn't even exist anymore. So I'm talking like we came very far. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, yeah, I recorded my first song and, um, for a first song, it was pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Usually when you do something, especially uh, with music or anything, you do something for the first time, it's not always perfect, right? But for a first song, you could tell that there was potential there. And I just fell in love with it, and I was like, I kept recording uh, with him, and then eventually... Um, Did you show your friends and family like, right away, or was it like yeah. something like... Yeah, people, oh. start, people started to know. Oh, okay, right yeah. away. Yeah, but it wasn't really anything like that. Um, but then I started to really started to become passionate about it. I really started to get investing uh, investing in it. So what I ended up doing was uh, instead of going to record at his, I decided to create my own studio and create my own foundation. And uh, I decided to do it myself. And fast forward 14 years later, we're here. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's crazy. So it's been legit 14 years. So that's uh, wh wh when, what year was this then? Two, 2007. I don't know. Uh, 2008. I don't know the year, but I, I was like either grade nine or I think it was 14. I just know the. Okay, 14. Yeah. Years, wow. And uh, yeah, so it's been literally half my life I've been actually recording and making music, but like I've always been creative. Like I've always been like writing okay. poems, stories. I've always been like really in that forte kind of thing, but uh, it wasn't until. Um, what fires until you up the most when like of writing music or creating music? Like sharing it with people or just yourself feeling like this is the best song ever? Or That's a very good question. Performing. For me, the feeling um, that fires me up the most is 
whenever I'm in the studio. So I have my own studio, okay. like as I mentioned before. So I have Pro Tools. Um, I invested in my own equipment, and uh, I pretty much, instead of going to pay a producer to go record a song professionally, like you could just do that at any time. Be like, hey, can I come book some studio time, record a song with you? I was thinking more long term. So I was like, okay, there's many different recording softwares. This is more for the business point. Yeah. Um, I was like, what is the future of recording? Like, what is the industry standard? So Pro Tools is the industry standard or there's other programs, but that is one of the industry standards. So I was thinking long term. I was like, okay, I could take a shortcut or I could take the long road take the path that most people don't go and build a strong foundation and essentially learn how to do everything myself. So when it comes to the creative aspect, I am fully hands-on and I pretty much do everything. So it's fully authentically me. That's so much better. Yeah. Like in a way, like, yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. Producer this, uh, mixer, master this. But if like you're doing it yourself, like many artists nowadays actually, I think, they, they they take pride in doing it th- themselves. A hundred percent. It t- it took a while to uh, to get that quality. Obviously, it took it took some time. And although I knew, like you you got to believe in yourself. I knew who I could I could see my full form. And you're kind of just going on that path, right? I see what I'm going to be, but you're obviously not there yet. There's steps. You know, you have to keep putting in that work. You have to practice. You have to make mistakes. And then eventually, as time goes on, you get better, right? So I always believed in myself. So That's important. Yeah. I think having confidence is, uh, is a big key. 100%. So from there, when like when did you start doing shows and stuff like that? Like, what, what, like, okay, you made your first song, and then what was the next step for you? I think the first show I did was in high school. So, yeah, because I started in high school. I was one of the first, I want to say one of the first few people who really started doing music in Ottawa. I'm sure there was, like, a lot of other people, too. But, like, I was, like, around the time when I was doing music, there wasn't very many people. You kind of knew, like, okay, this guy from this high school, there's this guy, this guy, this guy. There wasn't really many. So I was one of the few people. Um, I was the underdog, you know what I mean? And then... No one really, I guess, expected me to win. Okay. But I believed in myself, and, like, everyone was like, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy. And I'm like, I'm the guy. But it, it's all good. I wasn't, I guess I wasn't that guy yet, but I knew I was going to be. And I still have lots of growing to, be, uh, to do. But uh, as a result of being the underdog, I worked harder. And now all the people that... They were like, that's the guy. Like, I don't even know if they're making music anymore. Yeah. So. So, like, what do you think it's like your your work ethic? You think that's that's your, I mean, talent is one thing. But, like, I guess personality-wise, like, would it be your work ethic that really sets you apart, you think, for those people that uh, that you said was that guy, but they're not that anymore? Yeah, it's work ethic is definitely a, a big thing like i've uh, i work very hard um i take things very seriously i'm very professional yeah um yeah like i've always uh, like so before music i was uh, i was very into sports so i was very i was playing the majority of sports competitively um i was like that athlete at the school like that guy playing you were the popular guy or what People, yeah, I was I was cool. People knew me. You're cool. Yeah, man. people people knew me, but you were uh, the jock and the music guy like that's rare. Yeah, because usually the music guy is like the, the shy guy or whatever, right? Yeah, like, I was you the know, jock. The in the corner. And you're both music guy. Shit. Yeah, a whole bunch of things, but uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but I take the drive from all the competitiveness from the sports I was playing, and I put that into everything I do. So yeah, um, if you no one wants to be second best. Yeah. You know what I mean, if you're gonna do anything, you want to do it the best you can. I agree. And if you're gonna do something, you want to be number one, or you want to at least try your best. You know. It actually pisses me off to be second. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd rather be last. Yeah. <laughs> it's either your first or yeah, first or last. Yeah, <laughs> you so got you, it. So you said like a little while before you were producing all your music. So do you have like a team? Like, um, like you're doing some pretty big shows now. So what's what's that like? How do you how do you get those gigs and and do you have a team behind you that's helping you with that or what, what's going on? Yeah, so I have, um, I do most of the stuff myself. So uh, when it comes to the creative aspect, I 
Um, again, like I have my own studio. I record uh, everything. I don't actually make beats, but what oh, I you do... you don't make beats. I don't make beats, but what I do is like I take the beat and I change the beat. All right. So, for example, let's just say you heard a beat, like for Koala, for example, okay. or um, just any song, any song of mine. All right. I could show you the beat, and then I could show you my song, and you'd be like, wait, what did you do? Like that... Really? This part changed. Yeah, so what I do is I take the beat, and I uh, adapt it to what I'm trying to do. So part of being hands-on and doing all that yourself, you kind of get to make mistakes. You kind of get to dabble in all that. So I learned to pretty much reconstruct beats and kind of adapt it to what I'm trying to do. So uh, I pretty much make... I'm not saying I make the beat better, but like... You change I, it. Yeah, I make it work for yours. You make it yours. Yeah. So like you... Okay, so back to the team thing. You Do you have a guy who dedicate makes your beats for you or... I don't or do have... You go around or... Yeah, so that's the thing about this. So I'm I'm very, very picky when it comes to beats, and I'm very versatile with my music, so it's very rare that, like, it. I just go with the flow. It's like it's a feeling. So okay. I don't really control. I, I, I used to do that. So I used to have people that would make me beats, and I used to just go on it just because they were just making it just for me. But then I realized, like, I was forcing it. So now I just go with whatever feels right. So I look for beats. People send me beats or I just find beats. And it's it, it's a feeling that draws you in. You ever just, it's kind of like love at first sight. You ever just okay. see. You just know. Yeah, you just know. It's that feeling. So it's like, let's just say you were going to look for properties, for example. Yeah. You go to 10 houses. But then you go and to that one know. house. Yeah, you just know. It's the same thing with that beat. And when I hear that beat, everything just works out and flows naturally if i try to force it i could I, i'm an artist i could go on whatever right but i realize that whenever it's natural you go with the flow yeah that is when you create the best music i i agree too yeah <laughs> so on the business side then so uh, like for your bookings and like you handle all that yourself as well or do you have somebody that like yeah i okay. do everything i manage myself uh i had a few people try to manage me and stuff but it didn't really work out um it's okay, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, like nothing, nothing, nothing personal. It, it's whatever. But I just realized that um, I'm I'm a control freak. Exactly. Are you a control freak? Yeah. Well, for me, it's like <laughs> for me to find people who care about my dream as much as I do. Like you Impossible. have to, you have to want it more than me. And it's like no one wants it more than me. There's only one, like um, my director Andrew, one of my best friends, incredible, incredible man. Uh, he reminds me of myself. So if I was to be a director, that'd be that'd be me. If he was to be an artist, like whatever, looking like me, then yeah. So you 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 attract what you are. So you want to. My team is pretty much uh, individuals. I I obviously wear multiple roles and I do yeah. a, a, a lot of things. Obviously, I would rather just do the the artist part. But like when you're an entrepreneur, you have to wear multiple hats in order to be wear the hat you want to wear uh, wear the most. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I have a director, which is Andrew. Okay. I have, uh, a few photographers, but I have, uh, one that I've been working with, uh, more. Uh, his name is Kerbins. He's really good. I did a photo shoot with him. I'm saving all the photos for 2023. They're really well done, actually. Um, he's a really good photographer. And my brother, um, Constant, he does, like, uh, social media marketing and a whole bunch of stuff there. Um. Okay. Yeah, and it's just different producers. So honestly, like the team, I, I know most people they have a set team. It's like, oh, this guy does this or this girl does that. But like to yeah. be honest, like we're all just contributing to get from point A to B kind of thing. Okay. So then the creative process, like, do you start with the beat first, or is it like, uh, you know, you said you said you write a lot. So like, do you have like a a song written already? Then you gotta you know match it with a beat. Do you start with a chorus? Like, what what's the process like? If you're gonna like sit down right now and like try to make a song, very interesting. So I have a list on my phone. Um, it's called lyrics. Okay. And just throughout the day, if I come up with something creative, or let's just say we have a conversation and you say something that really really hits Resonance, me, yeah, yeah, or like sometimes I a lot of the time it's me saying things and I'm like just through conversation and i'm like we're having really intellectual conversations you know and then i'll say something i'm like that's a bar so then i write it down so i could go on my lyrics note and just go like this 
for the whole podcast and we'd still keep going. Yeah. Yeah. But what I do is I find the beat and like I said before, it's just that feeling. And I just, it just comes out of me. I can't explain it. Like, so beat first. Beat first. So I have everything, but the beat is what spark. The beat creates the vibe. Okay. So picture like this is the best way I could describe it. So let's just say there's a dancer. You're at a you're at a party or a club, and they play that track, and everyone's just like moving and like they feel it, and you you move a certain way. You know how the DJ kind of controls the crowd. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like the beat kind of like pulls something out of me, and it just I just it's like something takes over me, and I just go in the studio and I come out and then I listen to um, what I've made. And to go back to the first question, that is the feeling that is the best feeling. That's the, yeah. Yeah. Whenever I'm done. So I, 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 it takes a long time. It's like so. an aha moment. You know? Yeah. But it's, it's a lot though. So I, I have to find the beat. Then I have to buy the beat, all that legal stuff. Then I got to write and record it. And then I got to edit it. So the editing is what takes some time. Sometimes I'm in the studio it could range anywhere between 8 to 14 hours, and I'm so obsessed with this. Like, sometimes I'm in there. I just leave to go to the bathroom. I come back in. Sometimes I don't even eat. Sometimes I fall asleep. I've been in there for days. Really? Eh? It's crazy. Like, I'm obsessed with this, man. <laughs> so you, you really go until it's done. Yeah. It's not just, ah, it's been six hours. I think it's it. that's it. Yeah, like, I, music is very important to me, okay. and I take, it very, I take it very seriously, yeah. So um, for, for Gemini... How long did that take you to uh, start to finish? That project took me a long time. So um, I think I, I started working on that at the beginning of COVID. Okay. And originally I wanted to release it earlier, but then um, there was a lot of stuff that was going on. Um, I think there was uh, a whole bunch of like things going on in the world that it wasn't really appropriate to drop. There's a lot of uh, sure. it, like controversial issues, you know? Sure. So I didn't really think it was appropriate for me to drop the project because it's like it wasn't really relevant to what was going on. So I ended up waiting. And uh, the album ended up becoming like twice as long. So yeah. the concept for Gemini. So I'm actually a Gemini. So okay. if you look at the uh, album cover, I don't really have it here. But uh, it's literally. You can pop it up. Jordan can pop it up. Yeah, we could pop up pop up the uh, Gemini, Gemini album, album cover. Yeah. But it's essentially, so it's me, and it's kind of like the yin and yang symbol, right? Yin and yang, I don't... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I always say it wrong, but it, the concept I understand. So it's like on one side, so it's like I'm smiling, and the other one I'm yeah. like... Yeah. And then there's a devil on one side, and there's an angel on one side, and then there's like one side is like darker, one side's lighter. lighter so yeah. it's literally to... Res so the concept for the album is good and evil, the two sides of a Gemini. So we were talking about before, like... I'm very versatile in my music, and a lot of people, they're really into horoscopes, so they always try to put me in a box, and they're like, oh, it's because you're a Gemini, and I really started to think about it, and I was like, I do have two very distinct sides. There's one side where I'm, like, I'm rapping hard, full savage mode, and then there's another side that's, like, really sweet, really, really, uh, yeah, R no, you're, the R&B side. Your you rap voice is deep. Yeah. It's, it's a deep voice. But then I can sing, too, yeah, you, you know what sing, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's important to do both, Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So but I, I love to rap, but like the singing, the singing uh, content seems to be doing better. But I, I'm passionate about rap. Okay. All, all of it. But like, I love to rap. Yeah. Okay. So like, uh, you actually prefer rapping than singing, then, or, or no? This, you, you love both too much. They're very different. So the thing I like about singing is it's 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 a feeling. It's like it's it's like a vibe. You know what I mean? Um. But with rap, you're you're relaying a message. Like you get to say a lot of content. When like for example, if you look at my singing songs, if you were gonna take the lyrics, put it on a paper, it's like the hook. The lyrics are short because you're singing. You know, you're carrying the notes and whatnot. But when I'm rapping, I get to tell my story. I get to speak my mind. I get to put everything into it. So I'm saying more on the rap songs. Yeah. Like look for example, Kendrick Lamar. He say he says more sometimes on one song than people do in an entire album. Yeah, because he's rapping the whole time. It's it's fast. <laughs> yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. He's incredible. So okay, so top f three or five rappers. Like, who, who, who are your you're top? gonna go straight to that, huh? Yeah. Are we talking dead or alive? Like uh, what we anything, talking? anything. Just like you know, we t we talked about influences before, and 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 you mentioned like fifty. You know, they're like gonna that. pull this up in a few years. Huh? Okay. <laughs> um. 
top rappers of all time? Yeah, like your favorite, like inspiration. Like my favorite, yeah, or like favorite, who I think? No, 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 your favorite. Like I don't care. Like I, Paul Wall for me. That was a joke, by the way. If I was gonna say who my favorite are, it's completely different. But if I was gonna say who I think are, like who molded, who who gave you inspiration for what you do now? So. I think that's, that, that's, that's, a di- that's a different that's, question. That's like three questions. Yeah, so when I uh, first started making music, at the time, the most relevant people, I'm talking at the beginning, I'm not talking later on, like the very beginning was like um, 50 Cent, Usher, Missy Elliott, Sean Paul, Eminem, it was around that kind of era. And then everyone else started to come after that. If we're going to talk about top five, that's a very difficult question, and I know people are going to be like, oh, whatever, but like again, like my list goes... It's it's very vast, it's long, yeah. yeah. But you you got to put the big three in there: Kendrick, J. Cole, Drake. But it's tough though. People ask me this all the time, and I it's very difficult. It um, is. I want to I want to put. Uh, I can't give you. Uh, I can maybe go a little bit more than five. So I, I want to put Biggie. I want to put Jay Z, little Lil Wayne. Okay. You this have is the right or wrong answer. Yeah, you have to put Eminem there too. Andre three thousand. Mm. The, there's so many names, and I, I would I would, yeah. I would I would say a name that people wouldn't wouldn't expect. Like I might say Childish Gambino. They're like, okay. "What do you mean?" It's like go look at his old He's catalog. Dope. Yeah, and I have like some artists that people might people are people might not know like that. You know, there, there's the OGs, and then there's other people. So yeah. Let me tell you a funny story about Eminem. Um, how old are you? Twenty eight. Okay, so you were you were around when this album came out. I was like, you know, the Marshall Mathers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Stan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Incredible way I am. The I way I am. Yeah. You know that album. When I first got that album, I was like seven years old or eight years old, maybe. And the first song is a PSA, and it's just this guy telling you that Eminem hates you and that you bought this album and you're a piece of crap and whatever, right? And then I just started bawling my eyes out because I thought Eminem, Eminem loved me back, you know? Like, I love Eminem at the time and all this stuff. So anyways, it's just, it's just stupid, but uh, it was obviously explicit, so um, yeah, shouldn't be listening to that when you're eight. But my mom is an immigrant and she... she she doesn't know, right? Like, she just, what's explicit, so. He's a savage, but you know yeah. what? I'll, I'll be honest, like, Eminem had a huge part of my childhood, and he's a, one of the, there's a, many reason, many influences for w- what sparked, like. Your music. Yeah, but, like, anyone would be lying if they said Eminem didn't have some sort of influence on them, and, like, let's be real here, like, there's so, the hierarchy could be, People can name different. It's subjective. Music subjective, but like Eminem, you have to put him in the equation. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. Man. So, if I wanted to like hop on a beat, like, and try my hand at rapping, you you think you can you can like make it happen? Yeah. Like if you had a, you had a beat that like just lying around, I could just like yeah. I would. So this is what I would do. So yeah, if you were me. So what what do you? So we're drinking right now, but like everyone has their own. I think I'd rather do like I, I I can't do fast like especially if you want me to like f- like do it off the he- top like 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 no n- not writing anything to, I I'd have to like sing because it's slower and I can like think of what I'm gonna say. That's why I find it impressive for like freestyling. It's like yeah. Well, the thing about freestyling is this, right? So everyone has w- things that they do that kind of take them out of their comfort zone. So like, w- w- is it when you drink? Is it when you? do something else is it when you're around certain individuals is it when you're alone like what when what is the um the environment that you feel most comfortable and what probably t- alone if i was the record a song like yeah i'd probably i'd probably feel alone like that's better okay in case it's shit then like i'm i'm alone <laughs> yeah so so okay so you're you're alone and are you sober are you do you a little bit a little bit sober okay not not fully Okay, and what kind of beats do you? What kind of music do you like? Like, what kind of beats? I'm um, uh, Drake. I love Drake. Like, definitely no like, like really hard rap. But uh, if I, 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 I've done. I used to be in a band, too, so but like I was more like pop and rock. I love to try my hand on a beat and just like just like do something. You know? Okay, I got you. So <laughs> what I would do, since you like to be alone, mm, 
okay, so, and you like Drake beats, so what I would do is this. So you can literally go on YouTube, you can type Drake type beats, and you could be in an environment. So for example, like, I have my own studio, and if yeah. you feel more comfortable being alone, because I get it, like, no. peop, people kind of act different when people are there, I understand, so it's kind of like, when I record, it's very personal to you me. You prefer to be alone? Uh, always alone. It, it's very personal to me. Okay. So I have my own studio, I do everything myself, so it's 100% authentic, because I'm the only input in it. Yeah. Like, other people are different, they have, like, parties, they bring girls, they drink, they, yeah, all this I stuff. See that, like, me, I'm, I don't do that, I, I, I want to try but, like, to me, it's, like, it's very personal. I think so, too. Like, I wouldn't mind, like, let's say you were there, and, like, like literally, like, I said, okay, yeah, JC, like, help me, like, Yeah, so, so if that I wouldn't was, mind. Yeah, so if that was the case, so what, what we would do is this. We would put on, like, Drake-type beats, and I would just keep playing beats, and whatever beat, like, that you're, like, you that yeah, feeling, yeah, you're yeah, just going to yeah, look at me, you're going to be, like, this is the one. Yeah. So then we go. We'll get it all set up in the Pro Tools. And then what I'll do is I'll play the beat and I'll be like, just start, just start saying whatever you want. Like just start rapping or humming or whatever. It doesn't even have to be English. It could be any language. Like you could be gibberish. You could just be like, yeah. no, no, no. You know what I mean? And then that, that's what's naturally coming out of you. And then you have a cadence and a flow and then you're like, okay, you're like, da, 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 da. So then you put the lyrics to match that. Da, 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 da. Be like one day I walked, to the park, it'd be like, it'd be like, no, 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 no. One day I walked to the school. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. You know what I mean? Like it's just a lot of it artists. Just comes. Yeah, it just comes. So me, it's easier for me because like I've been doing this for a long time. But this is the biggest thing about creativity and art that people really need to understand. I guess is that there's no right way. There's just yeah. there. It, it just is. So you just go with the flow. So what works for me might not work for you, but like when you're selling properties or when, whenever you're doing business, you, you catch a groove. Like you, you, yeah. you know, you, you, you get momentum. Like the way you, it's like a flow state. Yeah. It, it's the same thing with that. And everyone does things differently. And exactly. That's, cool. that, that's the beauty of music. Like, yeah, you don't have to fit in a box. There's no rules to art. Like, and that's, yeah. that's the awesome part. Like, you don't have to do business one way or another. You exactly. Do it the way you want to do exactly. it. Exactly. That, that, that's amazing. Um, so we just go with the flow and have fun. And yeah. then we come out and we hear the track and be like, looks like Charles is the next rapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I need a refill and I guess it's time to take a little break. Mm -hmm. So I want to come back and talk to you after this, though, about what like what kind of advice you have for somebody who wants to, if they're watching this, want to start out in a, in a career in music, not necessarily rap or in any type of music. So uh, see, see what you have learned over the last 10 years 100%. 14, you know and see yeah sounds good let's get All right. it cool cheers <laughs> we're back yeah thanks jc thanks for coming on again once again appreciate so, you charles thank you um all right so i want to start first by saying because before the break we said if you were to start off again and if you met somebody who started off in the music industry what do you know now that you would kind of give his advice for somebody who's watching maybe that they would want to start in, in the industry? Very, very intense question. It is. Um, your foundation is everything. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you want me to dive yeah, into that a little bit? I, I'm going to assume what you're saying is like, don't just try to, you got to build the base before you try to get to the top. Yeah. So how you, the way you come up is everything. Your come up is everything. So, okay. for example, like, I could go on a show and get popping, get clout, be like, I'm an artist. I could be on, like, Netflix, get popping, whatever. They're always going to remember me from that show. It's like, for example, like, Drake with Degrassi. They're always like, Degrassi. But it's like, he's evolved so much from that point. Like, he's a he's still Drake, but, like, he's a different individual. Like, let it go. But, like, you see how people still tie the story? So, it's like, your foundation is everything. Um, yeah. Okay. The way okay, you come so up, so like you, the way you come up is like I'm not saying you're gonna come down, but like everyone you meet on the way up, if you were to go down, and this is everyone you meet on the way down. So you got you just got to be smart. You don't want to burn bridges. You want to just just be a good person. Be professional. Yeah, be like professional. Who just, you are like just professional. Yeah, just have pure intentions, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And now on to like, uh, I know being an artist, there's a lot of like. 
stories that you could nah, come up with in terms of like <laughs> your performances or just just like tell me tell me like your most memorable performance or like ooh, yeah start with that okay so um this year um i did two shows okay so this is post covid so before there wasn't really any shows and i guess they started doing shows again so i did two shows um the first show i actually opened for ovo so um ovo um was the headliner performance for the cebl uh basketball tournament so it's a canadian elite professional basketball league so i'm sure some of you guys know um j cole actually uh he was on the scarborough team okay and so there's a lot of hooper yeah there's a lot of traction like i mean it got a lot of hype built up but uh yeah, so uh, the Canadian Professional Basketball League, um, which is great. I support that fully. And, um, yeah, they had the, their grand tournament in Ottawa at Lansdowne. So they had uh, Smiley and Baca. Not nice. Uh, okay. They were the headliners, and they uh, they had an, uh, an opportunity for someone to perform to be the opener. So um, they gave me a few options, and I chose that. One was the halftime performance. The other one was uh, to open for them. I saw that uh, me, I like I, I know OVO, like I, I I wanted to open for those guys. Like I respect everything that they're doing, um, and I got to I got to meet them and I got to open for them. It was incredible. That's really nice. And yeah. then uh, yeah, after that, um, the traction from that show, I landed a bigger show. Was that Latin Sparks? Okay, that's that's the, the street festival. I'm, I'm gonna tell you about it. So it's the biggest Latin event in Ottawa. Um, there was five thousand plus people there. This wow. is po- this is post COVID, so keep in mind. Like, I don't know if you've, I don't know if you're going out, or if you you've been out recently, but like, be- before COVID, things were completely full. Then COVID happened. Things are not the same. We're starting to get back to normal, right? Yeah. But uh, post COVID, um, five thousand plus people. I, it was outside, I, eh? Yeah. So I, I headlined the event with a few other people and. Uh, that's so dope. It was crazy. It was crazy. Um, I've never... It was the biggest show I did to date, and uh, the crowd was incredible. Um, okay. I really love the Latin culture. I really support that, too. Yeah. And different experience for me, and uh, I learned a lot. And, yeah, I, I'm very happy that they welcomed me, and I yeah. support that fully. It was crazy. What? Uh, okay, so it's talking about Latin music. So you are you don't have a Latin background, but... You are very versatile in your music. So, like, how would you describe your genre? So, <laughs> someone, <laughs> I actually wrote that down the other day. So, I have a, I was talking to you. I have a lyric uh, note in my phone. I have a important note in my phone as well. So, um, what was the question again? <laughs> so, like, how do you describe your genre? Because, like, you so oh, you yeah, are yeah, versatile. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, just yeah. listen to your music. So, my, br- like, people... People ask me, like, what genre of music do you make? Yeah. To be honest, like, I just create. So I actually wrote down, your genre of music is different. So my brand is different, like yeah. I was telling you before. But uh, it's it's getting to the point now where I'm making music and I don't know what the genre is. It's just me. So it I lit- Yeah, so I literally was like, I wrote down on the note, your genre is different like the brand i was like i'm like although it might resemble some latin or afro beats or some hip-hop or r&b whatever like don't get me wrong there's like all different influences yeah different cousins of different genres right but like when you listen to my music you i would love for someone to tell me what the genre is because i honestly don't know yeah so for me i would i would love for you to tell me or somebody to tell me i would love for that i like i think it's like it's a good mix of r&b hip-hop rap latin um afro beat yeah like all the stuff you said it it it, it doesn't fit in really into one mold exactly it's like a little bit of this a little bit of that so it's like people ask me like what genre of music do you You make but i i could say i just make music but then you know how people are gonna be like what do you mean you make music so i say the genre i make is different yeah they're like what what is that i'll be like (laughs) that that's different that's the thing so again like the fact that i can't like we can't pinpoint it that we must have a good thing yeah it is a good good thing. thing because i like 
me personally, like we're talking about creativity. It just flows. It just comes there. It just is right. So you can't put my genre of music in a box because it's like, okay, this song might be here, but it's like, what about this song? Yeah. And that song. And it's not, it's not like it's like this song, this song, this song. It's like, if we're talking about like, let's just say we're going 360, we're talking all the degrees here. Oh, hundred percent. So it's like, how do you pin a genre? Yeah. So I honestly don't know. And to be honest, like I'm you don't need at, one. You don't yeah, need one. Uh, but I, if someone would l- could put a genre for me, I'd love to know. But I don't need one. I just make music. Yeah. I'm just me. It's uh, different. That's what it yeah. is. All right. Speaking of different, like let's get into like your brand, different brand. So what what's what's going on with that? Very interesting. Um, I don't have my phone here, but the brand I have is called Different, and I represent it with uh, the Joker. So, to explain the the concept, uh, I'm sure everyone is familiar with your standard 52 deck of cards. Yeah. Um, so, you have your four kings, four queens, jacks. You have all the numbers all the way to the aces, right? But you have two jokers. So, night and day, darkness, light, up, down, left, right. There's a polar opposite to each. So... One male joker, one female joker, whatever you want. One this, one that. Yeah. Or however you want to interpret it. So the joker is the wild card. So my brand is called Different, and I represent... I spell different with, like, three eyes. Okay. So that's where the three comes in. So Gotcha. That has a bit more context to it, but the brand Different is... Um, think about it like this. So this is the analogy that I used to explain it. So let's just say you have the deck of 52. Okay. You put it... All in a circle. So all the kings are here. Queens are here. Jacks are here. Okay. Tens, whatever. Okay. So all the cards are grouped together. What's the one card that's different? The Joker, right? So essentially the brand is different. And what that means is like if everyone just bees themselves, like everyone just be yourself. Yeah. If, if you do not try to conform to society, try to... Because society, media, your friends, family, every, every everyone around you, they're trying to say, you got to do this. You got to do that. Oh, you, this is the path you got to take. Go to school, do this, or, like, don't do that. Like, everyone's always got a certain uh, formula for something. And it's like, just be yourself. We were talking about creativity before. Yeah. You asked me about how you make music. It just flows. It just is. It just flows. Like, for example, Charles, like if you were just if you were to just be yourself without conforming, without following any stereotypes, without following society, without listening to your family, mm-hmm. your friends, anyone around you, your environment, wh- who would you be? Oh, it'd be so different. Exactly. So that that is literally what the Joker is. So the brand different is just be yourself, and if everyone just be himself, if everyone just be himself, and uh, then everyone would truly be a Joker. So you're not conforming. For sure. And the the beauty about the Joker is like, so this is the analogy. So all the cards are in a circle. Yeah. The Joker is in the middle. It has the ability to adapt. It can go, it could be a king, queen, jack. It could be anything. So pretty much like just to summarize it, if I'm going to connect it to myself, my whole life, I've always been cool with everyone. I can go to any group. I could adapt. I could be a part of that to an extent, but uh, no matter how much I try to fit in, that's not fully me. Gotcha. So I realize I can go to here, I can go to that, I can go to all these things. But uh, just essentially the brand different is just about being yourself. So so what do you guys make? We have chains. Um, we have merch coming soon. Okay. Um, but the brand is essentially about ju- just being you and just not conforming, just thinking for yourself, um, just being who you are and just going with the flow like who you what what moves you naturally you know what i mean I understand. that's what the brand is so essentially we have all the different cards and what would be great would be if everyone was just a joker which would be the wild card which essentially would mean you're being yourself which just means you're being your different being different is essentially just being you like so different if, is good you know? yeah different is good like we're taught that like you got to conform and everybody got to be the same if you're not this then you're doing something wrong. Exactly. And so. I like to challenge the norm, to be honest. Um, for example, an entrepreneur. Yeah. 
you're you're the you're a wild card. You're you're going against the norm. Yeah. Cuz it takes a lot of guts to do that and you're you're pursuing your dream, you're doing something that not most people would do. Very rare to be an entrepreneur. So essentially the brand is just about being yourself and encouraging nice. people to be themselves and if everyone was just themselves then i think people would be much happier you know what yeah. i mean oh 100 percent. much like, more fulfilled i can't wait to drop your merch so you, you have the chains now but uh yeah i don't know if the camera could see oh, this, it, it this can camera see. here yeah that can, the camera right, right there this is the this camera here it. so uh i have the number well it's a three in roman numerals right here okay um so me just being different me being myself my number is three um Three is a very special number. It means many different things. Um, if I'm going to connect it to myself, my mom, my dad, my brother, um, past, present, future, I can keep going on. Um, three is a very special number. Um, I believe every individual has a number. Okay. You know, people are into numerology. People yeah. are into horoscopes. Everyone's into different things. I believe everyone uh, has a number. And uh, at the end of the day, just... Just be yourself. Do what flows for you and do what is natural to you and cool. whatever. It might not make sense to people, but at the end of the day, if you're being you and you're following your intuition, you're doing what you believe. Yeah. And it's you're not hurting or harming anyone. Yeah. I support it, you know? Cool. Um, Let's get into Cruella. Cause uh, the big track. That, big track. That, that pop, like... I'm sipping for uh, this one. Yeah, you sip <laughs> for that one. Let me introduce it. So, a million on YouTube, and I just checked recently, 740 on 740k on Spotify. So, like, tell me, like, do you know when it's it's gonna bang? Like a beat? Like, tell me the whole backstory of this song, because like for obviously, Koala specifically, yeah, specifically this one, because like clearly it's it's your biggest track, and I mean it's I love the song, man. I I bump it all the time, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, so, Koala. So, obviously, I'm looking for beats. I'm going, doing my thing. And uh, I come across this beat that moves me. It's moving me. It's pulling me in, but it's not something I would go on, typically. Like, like okay. I think you asked me about the <laughs> genre before. It's like, I just make music. I make whatever comes to me, to be honest. But predominantly, I want to say it's more hip-hop more r&b kind of influenced or whatever but as i progress as an artist it's just more just whatever comes to me so i find this beat it's more like reggaeton mm -hmm. kind of spanish kind of vibes you know and um i'm like this isn't something i would go on and i, I was like you know what like you know what like let, let's just let's just try it out let's just see so i, I go into the studio lock in for how many hours come out listen to the song and i'm like how did i do this <laughs> what is this this is whatever i'm like you know what let's let's just put it on the album so be it so gemini uh i come to releasing the gemini album so we got the good side and the dark side i guess koala was on the good side but it's yeah. kind of it's kind of savage a, song okay. a little bit i don't know whatever side it was on but um yeah i decided to uh exit my comfort zone so for all the people listening you don't really grow when you stay in your comfort zone you really that's so true you you only grow whenever you exit your comfort zone or for example let's just say you hit the gym i'm really in the fitness too so you hit the gym what you do is like when you're in the gym you like you work out you break down you tear you rip that muscle apart Mm -hmm. they say that like 85% I don't know don't want to get technical with the numbers but the majority of how you build muscle is it's not in the gym it's in the kitchen so I break down the muscle and then I feed it with the right nutrients you yeah. know what I mean okay okay so okay what about the video for that like Cruella that that was dope <laughs> Yeah. Like, well, what was the what's the process? Because I've actually always been curious. Like, I know nothing about filming music videos. So, like, how how does that work? I know I know Andrew. You said like one of your good friends. Besides just him, but like the process of filming a music video. Do you have like like there's a song playing in the background, or and then you're lip syncing over? Or like, what's what's, what's happening? <laughs> That's a good question too. So whenever I make the song, so while I'm creating the song, I'm thinking, okay, I think two things. 
like obviously a lot of it's internal but if i'm thinking external it would be two things so one is like okay i'm thinking like on stage how are the people going to react to the song i always think about being on stage thousands of people stadiums like out it could be outdoor it could be blues fest it could be anything you know when the dj pauses the song yeah while the chorus is playing and the whole crowd you hear the whole crowd like singing yeah your lyrics. i've been in the crowd not the not not the exactly performer. but you know what i'm talking about that <laughs> yeah. moment where they're singing your lyrics for you yeah and you're up there and you're like this is real yeah. don't get me wrong views streams whatever comments whatever engagement that's real but like when you're on stage, it's a different story. And the whole crowd has their cell phones out and they're singing your song. That's a different kind of experience. Yeah. A completely different experience. Um No, but the music video. So that that yeah. music video is lit. Like yeah, you so get the dogs like like tell me the whole inspiration for that video. Yeah, so the song is obviously Spanish based, so I was just thinking, okay, okay. So like what are we going to do? So when I think Koala Again, like, it wasn't like I was intentionally trying to make a song about Koala DeVille, like Disney. I wasn't trying to do that. It just flows, right? So it just so happened to be that the song ended up being about, like, Koala, and I had a little spin on it, and I was like, okay. So when I'm thinking about the visuals, I'm, I already went through the performance and seeing the crowd engage like that. So I already went yeah. through that. I'm like, okay, so now what about the music video? So I'm like, okay. To me, what I see for this music video... Quella Deville, very powerful, very stern yeah. woman. You know Quella, yeah, 101 Dalmatians. Yeah, 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 everyone knows Quella Deville, very famous icon. You know, she's whatever you want to call her, right? But it's Latin, Latin theme. So I'm like, you know what? Let's do a Latina version of Quella Deville. Okay. So we literally tailored the whole video, kind of Disney theme a little bit, but like more on the Latin theme. So. Um, we had, um, yeah, I saw we got, that we, we got a group of, of, it was themed to Latin, uh, to the Latin theme. So we had some Latinas on there. So essentially the music video was to do a Latin Latina or a Latin version of Coella DeVille. And yeah, that's what we did. Okay. That's to, to embrace the culture. I really, I really love the Latin culture. Okay. I really love what they're doing. Their music's incredible. Yeah, reggaeton Makes is just just everything that they do. I support it fully. I love it. Nice. Um, so I was trying to essentially just do a little tribute, just to kind of give back to to the culture. Yeah. And like, did you know it was gonna pop off? Oh no, you said it was a song that like you know wasn't sure, but I. So let's just say I listen to the whole project. Don't get me wrong. You have your. It's it's a long project. There's 16 yeah. tracks. So. As I mentioned before, we separate. It's Gemini, right? So Gemini is good and like bad, yeah. two sides. So I separated with good and good and bad or good and evil. So what we did, we we did eight tracks on good and eight tracks on eight tracks on bad. So it wasn't really intentional, you know what I mean? Okay. It, it just happened. Like I know you want an answer for like, oh, how? Like, yeah, <laughs> you can't really put. I just go with the flow. Okay. You go with the flow. All right. All right. Don't know. get me wrong. It was calculated. Like, we had, like, it was planned. Okay. But, like, it also wasn't planned at the same time. No, 100%. So, like, what's next for you then? Like, after Gemini, I mean, I listened to the album. It was amazing. So Appreciate that, man. What, uh, what do you got going on next? What's your next moves? And, yeah, what could people expect from you? So, um, next I have, uh, I've been working on this album for... About a year and a bit. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell with the way the time's been going with everything <laughs> that's been going on. But uh, so I have uh, one album that's already out called Underdog and the other one you mentioned called Gemini. My third project is called Variant and I'm dropping that on January 13th, 2023. Short and sweet, seven tracks. And... Um, Again, there's not really a genre, a cookie cutter mold or a box I put it in. It's just me creating music. Uh, seven tracks are all different genres. Um, nice. Me personally, I think it's a step up from the previous work I've been doing. Um, again, the album's called Variant. So all the songs are <laughs> songs that when you hear, um, Variant is. Um, 
let's just say let's just let's just get into math for all the math people. I'm sure there's probably not too yeah. many math people, but let's just say we're talking statistics. Variant is the outlier. So correct. Another way of saying different is variant because different would be like you know what I mean. So yes, um, that's deep, man. Yeah. So uh, if you really want to get deep with it. Disney Plus, there's a show called, uh, well, like Loki, you know, the Avengers Loki? I just got Disney Plus today, so I'm going to watch it. You need to watch Loki. So, Loki, Loki you know the Avengers, right? Uh, I know a little bit of them. It's okay if you know don't know Loki. Avengers. I don't know Loki, Loki, though. So, Loki is Thor's brother. Okay. And Loki has his own show on Disney Plus, and it's connected to the Avengers. Long story short, I watched the show, and... Um, he is the variant in that in, in the show, and okay. the long story short, the way that they break it up is they have timelines, and a variant. Give you have to watch the show, but it, just to summarize what I'm saying, the variant is something. It's the one thing that could change the whole trajectory of everything. Does that make sense? That does make sense. So it's like literally like. You are the one person that makes a difference. You're the difference maker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's factor. Yeah. So that's what variant means is it, essentially. So when you hear all the tracks, they're it's all they're all very different, but it's just the type. Every single piece of art that I created there, it's like you hear it and it's literally like let's just say you used to hearing this, it's the outlier. You're like, okay. whoa, what is this? So it's almost done. There's one song that needs to be mastered. Okay, left, so, but, but it's it, almost it's, done. It's it, dropping it January 13, yeah, 2023. Yeah, it's pretty much Let's done. Go. Yeah. Okay, so that's what that like. You said you performed twice like this year. Do you plan on performing more, or do you try to keep it like uh, you want to focus on being in the studio, or what, what's what's that plan? Because like I'd love to see you live. I'm sure there's tons of people that want to want to see you live too, right? Yes, so I did uh, actually. Um, I'm gonna apply for Blues Fest. Nice. Um, in Ottawa, that's uh, for those who don't know. That's uh, one of the biggest um, performing events you could do as an artist. In, yeah. In Ottawa, so I'm gonna apply for Blues Fest. Um, regarding the shows, don't get me wrong. I put myself out there, but like, I. People, opportunities flow to me. They come to me all the time. If it makes sense, I will do it. If it doesn't, okay, then so I will, will interject, right? So Okay, so you're not trying to perform like a, a club every weekend. It has to make sense, okay. right? So the, the two shows that I mentioned before, they reached out to me. Okay. So that's more what you prefer. Like, so it, it, it doing depends. things that you really want to do instead of just hopping on anything. It ha- it has to make sense, right? Okay. Like, uh, no, I understand what you mean. Like, I take this very, I take this very seriously. I'm very professional in in this uh, in this aspect, and it's like, if the show or if the opportunity is gonna continue to keep taking a step forward or continue to keep elevating, I'm I'm for it. It has to make sense because when you do a show, it takes time away from other aspects of the business. For example, let's just say I book a show. And it's in like two months. I have to practice like every night. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when I practice every night with all the other things that I have going on in my life, when it comes to the actual creation of music and creating content, it kind of intervenes because it's like, okay, you want to do this, but it's like you You still got to make sure you do all this other stuff so the show gets done properly, right? So... Um, it has to make sense. So if okay. it does make sense, I'll adjust my life and I'll accommodate around it. But like, I'm not just accepting any opportunity. It has to make sense. I get a okay, lot of opportunities okay. that are offered to me. I'll be honest, but, um, it has to make sense. It's either, it's either intuition or a vibe. It feels right. Or it just makes sense. Like okay. for the business. Yeah. Yeah. Not even fi- just financially. You know, yeah. that's one thing but, that, uh, to go back to that. You attract what you are. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's it for me, man. I don't know. Did you did you have anything you want to add? Uh, just shout out or anything like that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Eh? But yeah, I, I appreciate you for having me, man. Yeah, Thank I you know. so much. I know your brother's uh, your brother's uh, sitting back there. We got to get him on next time. I t- I told him before when we when we had the break that uh, 
you got to come on. He said, yeah, I need a little mental preparation. He said, 100%. Yeah, I'm We're going to switch camera. roles. I'll be there. <laughs> Jordan will still be there, but I'll Jordan be there. be there, but the constant will be in, yeah. in this seat. <laughs> well, man, th- honestly, it was an amazing interview, man. So thank you uh, once again for coming. And um, I, I want to see you live one day, man. I can't wait for the album to drop, too. So Appreciate that, man. Yeah. 2023, we got a lot of things going. And again, if uh, when, sorry, I don't say if. You got to speak into existence what you want. It's called manifesting, for those who don't know. Love when that. I perform next year, I hope to see you there. All right, man. Love it. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. <laughs> right, baby.